This slideshow serves as the York County School Division's guide for how to do the summer reading annotations for rising ninth graders. The first thing that students should be aware of is what they're looking for are quotes throughout the novel that help to demonstrate the author's theme. A theme is the author's message. So the message is the point that the authors are trying to communicate and it should be expressed as a point. Evil, or good versus evil, is not a theme. However, good always triumphs over evil is a theme. So a theme is a message. As you read the assigned texts, you are looking for quotations that help to support the author's themes. Certainly, in some movies or books, there are more than one message that you might find. Generally, however, there is a central message, a main point that the author serves to emphasize. In a movie, for example, like Disney's The Lion King, there is one central theme, but there are many other small subsequent themes as well. So The Lion King emphasizes the importance of personal responsibility, and that is its main theme, but there are also important messages like the power of friendship, the danger of jealousy, and the value in self-discovery. Those are themes. What students are doing is reading through the book using a reading guide that's been provided by the teacher that has look for items. These look for items are things that students should be looking for in the text. The idea of the sticky notes is to show that you're not just reading the words of the book, but thinking about the author's point and how he or she makes this point clear to the reader. Can you point to specific examples that show that you understand the theme, that show that you can identify where particular symbols occur? Can you show that you can make connections to other texts and identify particular points that the author might make within the text? So what you are doing is looking for quotations in the book, and then you're going to mark the passage that corresponds to those particular passages in the teacher's look for items. You'll use a sticky note and you will label it. And you'll use these pieces to write four short paragraph annotations. So essentially using the look for guide, students are going to mark their books with sticky notes. The sticky note should have a label on them denoting what it is that this look for item corresponds to. So for example, if you are asked to look for the symbol of stars, then anytime you see a quotation that makes a reference to stars, you'll sticky note that particular quotation in the book. And again, on that sticky note, you would write the word symbol of stars. Ninth graders will be reading two texts. Those two texts will both be marked with sticky notes, approximately 20 sticky notes per book. The ninth graders will then be using the quotations and the information that they have marked in order to answer four questions in paragraph form. Here is a sample teacher provided reading guide. The student reading guide gives you the title of the book and says during your reading you will be expected to find evidence of several items and to place sticky notes that indicate your discovery of them. So we're looking for the theme, which will be provided by the teacher, certain symbols, which will also be provided by the teacher, and certain places where there can be connections made to other texts. And then you're also looking for quotations that would help you to answer, that has, uh, uh, answer a question that has been posed by a teacher. So these sticky notes, which there should be approximately 20, should have a word or a phrase on them to indicate what it is that students are denoting. So here is a sample reading guide for a novel called Lord of the Flies. So during a student's reading of Lord of the Flies, what I would expect as a teacher is for students to go through the text and to sticky note and label those sticky notes, quotations that they find that are 
in some way helping to argue or to prove the point. So for example, the theme is the author's message or the overall point that the author communicates. With your theme sticky notes, this is the place where you are pointing to a quotation that helps to show the theme. So in The Lord of the Flies, the theme is the innate evil of humanity. So I want four to five sticky notes with quotations that point to the evil of humanity. So for example, in the novel, they accidentally kill another little boy on the island and they say, we didn't do it, it wasn't our fault. I could point to that and their denial of responsibility and say, yes, that shows the innate evil of humanity. So underneath the quotation that I think shows that, I'm going to place a sticky note and on it, I'm going to write theme, evil of humanity. I should find at least four to five quotes that pertain to that particular theme. For number two, it says symbols communicate meaning. So a symbol is an object that represents something else like white meaning purity or the apple meaning wisdom. So in this text, you're gonna look for these symbols, piggy's glasses, the conch shell, and the beast or the beastie. So anytime that you see quotes in which those particular symbols are mentioned, you are going to put a sticky note on those particular quotations and then label them. Symbol, piggy's glasses. Symbol, conch shell. Symbol, beast. The next piece asks for you to be able to connect the text to other literary works. Note here that literary works are not necessarily just novels. They might be television shows, or movies, or poems, or short stories, or artwork. Sometimes there might even be connections to particular historical events as well. What you're trying to do is to connect this particular work of literature to another work of literature that you've read in a meaningful way. So for example, if I see the boys are becoming increasingly savage during their time on the island, maybe I could relate this to a movie like The Purge in which people are savage and demented. Or maybe I could look at it an opposite of that. So another text where people are kind to one another. So you're trying to, again, make connections with other literary works, showing how what this author does with the theme and what this author does with the theme. The final thing for which students are looking are teacher-generated questions. The teacher is going to ask a question, and you are looking for quotations in the novel that would help you to answer that question. So the teacher-generated question here is, what does Golding suggest will happen when people are free from society's rules, restrictions, or laws. So any place that you see an answer to that question, so if a character says rules, we don't need rules or order, that would be an example of where the characters show that the only thing that will happen without rules is the development of savagery. So you're looking for quotations. You're going to take your sticky note and put them under that quotation, and then you're gonna label the sticky note Right? with, again, teacher-generated question. And that will let us know that that particular quotation would help you to answer that teacher-generated question. Here's an example of what your sticky notes might look like. Literally, there are sticky notes throughout the book, not concentrated in one area of the book, but spread throughout the text that look for those teacher items. So for example, I might color code my sticky notes where my symbol sticky notes are yellow, or I might color code my sticky notes where my examples of connections are orange. And on the orange sticky notes, I'm going to write making connections. On the yellow sticky notes, I'll write symbol of and whatever symbol I'm asked to look for. So here's an example. The quotation above refers to Piggy's glasses and it talks about his specs. So again, I have a sticky note here in the book that says symbols, Piggy's glasses. And this helps to show the teacher that I did in fact read the book 
go through and look for quotes that would help me understand those items in the teacher's look for guide. This is the piece that will be completed after the book is read. So, the first thing that they're asking students to do is to think about the theme. And it says, in the space below, explain the theme of the text and provide examples to justify your claim. Respond in paragraph form. Later in the presentation, I'll talk about exactly how to put the paragraph together. But since the theme has already been given, you're going to be using examples from the text that back up how that is the theme. For symbols, it says explain one of the symbols and justify your answer with specific examples from the text and respond in paragraph form. So after highlighting or again sticky noting those various symbols in the text, now this is asking you to think about what those symbols actually mean. For making connections, all of those times that you make connections to another work of literature, maybe the way a character behaves, or maybe an outcome in the text or something that happens, pick the best one. And again, how can this text be connected to the story or the novel or the nonfiction work that you are reading? For questioning, right, respond to the question that the teacher has asked in paragraph form and make sure you provide evidence from the text. So for all of these, you will have one paragraph, one paragraph about the theme, one paragraph about a symbol, one paragraph about a connection made, and one paragraph in answer to that teacher-generated question. Here is what your paragraph format should look like. The first thing that you must have is a topic sentence that provides an answer to that particular question. So for example, theme asks you to explain the theme. So your topic sentence should, should say something like the theme of the novel is. Then you're going to use a specific example from the text that you noted with your stickies that would support your answer. So for example, in the text, the savagery of man can be seen when, and you're going to give me an example. Then you're going to explain that example. How does that moment in the text support the theme of the novel, whatever it is? Then you're going to provide a second example from the text that supports your claim. Where else do you see that happening? You must explain the second example and then link it right back to that topic sentence. Thus, the author shows and then restate your theme. So this is the format that you're going to use to answer each one of those. So for the teacher generated question, you'll have a topic sentence that answers the question, use an example from the text to explain it, explain that example, use one more example from the text to show that you know what you're talking about, explain it, and then link it back to the thesis. Here are some sample annotations. I've done the theme and the making connections so you can see the kind of quality of analysis that teachers are looking for. Remember, it's only four paragraphs using those quotations and examples that you've pulled from the novel. So for the theme, if Golding's theme is of course the innate savagery of mankind, the topic sentence states that in the novel, the author shows the theme that the nature of mankind is evil. Then give an example. First, the boys exclude the weaker members of the tribe, including Piggy and the little children. For example, the boys make fun of Piggy, calling names and laughing at him. Now I have to explain that. Their poor treatment of him shows that people can be cruel and mean. Now I need another example. Also, by the end of the novel, the boys have become savage and cruel. In one scene, they kill a pig and chant about its murder. Now, how does that show that they're evil? The boys have painted their faces and act like savages, showing that without rules, people will behave poorly and act with malice or evil intent. Now, I'm gonna link that back to my thesis. Thus, throughout the book, the author shows how people are innately bad. So we're asking you to kind of follow that paragraph format, topic sentence, 
give an example from the text, explain that example, give another example from the text, explain that example, link it right back to that topic sentence. Here's an example of a making connections. The Lord of the Flies is similar to the television show Lost. In Lord of the Flies, the boys become increasingly wild and uncivil. For example, they do not wear clothing and have not cut their hair. They are dirty and do not care about their appearance. Now I'm going to connect that piece to Lord of the Flies. Similarly, in Lost, the characters who crash land on a deserted island also become wild. Their appearance, like their morals, decline as they begin to fight amongst each other. Also, here's my second example, the boys are afraid of a beast in Lord of the Flies, and in Lost, they are afraid of the smoke monster. Now I'm going to use this to go back to that theme. Both of the stories show that without law or order, people act cruelly based on their fears. So again, it's an example of a connection between the two. You make sure that you explain what you are connecting, and how does it help to show the theme. So we're following the same format. Please refer back to that paragraph format if you struggle at all with the composition of these four paragraphs. The purpose of doing the sticky notes, which we are calling pre-annotations, is to prepare students for the different strategies that they will be using in the 10th and 11th grade. Next summer, students will be asked to find quotations and to apply various reading strategies, including questioning, where a student has to ask or pose a thoughtful question and then answer it. Again, looking towards the theme. Determining importance is looking for those moments that we call t-shirt quotes, the ones that really define the work of literature as a whole. Those quotation marks that stand out to you and make you say, aha, I see exactly what the theme of this novel is. Those are the determining importance. Students will also have to make connections. They'll have to talk about the themes in different literary works. And students will also have to engage in interpreting language. Interpreting language means analyzing the language, looking for things like symbols and metaphors and literary devices that are being used, and to think about what the author is doing using those particular literary devices. So the pre-annotations that students are doing in ninth grade are learning strategies. They are teaching them how to do the annotations that will be expected in the 10th and 11th grade. Some quick reminders on your language. You should be writing in your best formal language. Writing like this is formal, which means that you should avoid things like contractions. Write out your word like cannot or should not. Try to avoid personal pronouns like I or me or you or we or us and avoid any kind of slang usage. Think about your words and whether or not they are the best words that you could use in that situation. You should also discuss literature in present tense, that the author shows this or one example is rather than one example was, or a character says this, or in the novel this happens. So again, present tense when you're talking about literature. Your annotation paragraphs that you are doing those four paragraphs should be about five to seven sentences, but they might be a little bit more. Make sure you follow the steps. So again, topic sentence, provide an example, explain the example, provide another example, explain that, link that back to that topic sentence. One of the biggest things to avoid is plagiarism from online sources. There are a variety of sources out there that will offer you quotation analysis. Plagiarism includes word-for-word -word copying. It includes using top 10 quotes and the unpacking of those quotes. And it also includes looking at sources like Sparknotes or Schmoop and changing the words slightly around in order to, again, make them yours. Plagiarism is a violation of the rules and will re result in a zero for the assignment. The work is, should be your own, like the language should be your own. So as you go through the novel and you place your sticky notes, you're looking for things that will help you to answer those questions at the end. 
using those look for guides to kind of help you in your placing of sticky notes and identifying quotations, identifying moments in the novel where these things will help you in your final paragraph writing. There is a template that is fillable that is available online for students. So the paragraphs may be typed into the fillable template. The pre-annotations, the pre-annotations are those four paragraphs, those will be collected on the first day of school. Teachers will also take a look at the sticky notes in the book for completion. Again, there should be around 20 sticky notes and each sticky note should have a label that explains what it corresponds to. So if you are asked to look for a particular symbol, you should have a sticky note under that quotation that you have found with the little word symbol of whatever it is that the teacher asked you to look for. So sticky notes in the book are just simply something the teacher is going to glance at and look at to make sure that sticky notes are again placed throughout the book and that they're not all in the last few pages or in the first few pages. And again, that the sticky notes seem to be placed in a thoughtful fashion and that they have the label on them so that teachers can see to what note they correspond. At York High School, rising ninth graders will be reading I Am Malala and The Hobbit. Your look for guide is going to have plenty of information for both books there. But I Am Malala tells the story of a young girl who fights for her right to an education and who fights oppression for freedom. Part of the theme that you are looking for is how the author shows that with determination and will, obstacles and any kind of inequality can and should be overcome. So again, as you're doing your reading, you are going to use some of the sticky notes to mark various quotations that show a theme. So where do you see this theme and where do you see quotations? And again, quotations can be the narrator's description or it can be something said by someone. Where do you see those quotations that would help you to know that that is the theme? The Hobbit describes the journey of Bilbo Baggins and the author has many different themes in the text, including the value of friendship, the importance of accepting adventure, the value of resisting greed and temptation, and how power and the desire for power can corrupt absolutely. So as students read through the text, they're being asked to place sticky notes that correspond to the teacher provided look for guide. The look for guide will have themes that students should find sticky notes that would correspond, quotations that would correspond to those various themes. Students are also going to be asked to look for various symbols and to mark passages that relate to those symbols or discuss those symbols within the text. Students will also be asked to make connections. So again, how can a character be seen as similar to another character? How is a situation that a character is in very similar to another work of literature? So there will be passages that students have to mark for making connections. There's also a teacher provided question that students must mark their answers or passages that would show the answer to that question within the book itself. So those are the requirements. Students will sticky note their book. The sticky notes should have a label on them that shows what those various quotations correspond to. So the quotation will be on the page, obviously, and students simply need to take their sticky note and put the sticky note under the quotation that refers to that particular thing and then label the sticky note with what it is that they are marking. So symbol of, theme of, making connection. Those sticky notes will be looked at as students arrive in their English class on the first day. The annotations, the four paragraphs, are also going to be collected. So those are the requirements for rising ninth graders coming to York High School next year. So here are some recommendations on how to accomplish the summer reading. Read the book with the theme and the teacher provided look for items in mind. 
What is the author communicating? Where do you see that theme being illustrated? Where is the evidence? So along the way, as you read, you're going to sticky note quotations that help you get to that theme or to answer the questions. Look for quotations that provide a moment of insight into the book's meanings. So you are going to sticky note approximately 20 passages or 20 quotations within a text and all you have to do is to take the sticky note and write a little label on it that says to what that corresponds. So making connections and then put that sticky note in the text underneath the quote that helps you to make a connection. If you're doing a theme and you find a quote that you think shows the theme, for example, how strong Malala is and her willingness to fight oppression, you'll put a quotation or a sticky note under that quotation and you'll write on that theme. Right? That's all students are asked to do. Then, once they've sticky noted the book, you're going to use those moments to answer those four questions in paragraph form. 